President Obama says he has sealed the Iranian deal as the he has the votes uh, to put this through. Is that really winning approval? And he said, you know, John Kerry saying they got through the details there. Is that really the truth? John Hanna joining us. He is with Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, a senior counselor, and he also served as Vice President Dick Cheney's National Security Advisor. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. All right, John, what do you say? I mean, he says he's won approval on this uh, Iranian deal. Is getting the votes winning approval? No, I mean, it's a complicated uh, issue, Arlene, but uh, to say that they get approval for this is just a complete myth. The way the process has been set up is that President Obama only needs 34 Democratic senators out of 100 senators in the United States Senate not to vote against this deal in order to have it go through. So today, the 34th Democratic senator announced that they will not oppose the deal. Nevertheless, within both houses of the United States Congress, both the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, there are already well over uh, 50 percent of members who will vote against this deal. The majority of both of these bodies want to disapprove this deal. They think it's dangerous. And that's the point that everybody has to drive home, that this deal will go through despite the fact that in almost every poll, a majority of the the American people, and by declaration, a majority of their elected representatives in the United States Congress oppose this deal. Wow. How is this going to play out politically in this election campaign then? Well, I think clearly now you have virtually Mm -hmm. every single Republican running for president saying that they are opposed to this deal. They think it's bad. They think it's dangerous for the United States and our friends in the Middle East and that they will work with varying degrees of diligence to try and undo uh, the damage that's been done and mitigate the risks. On the other side, you have Mrs. Clinton, as well as uh, a handful of other uh, Democratic wannabes who have said, in effect, uh, that they support the deal, uh, with the exception of one, uh, former Senator Jim Webb from Virginia, who doesn't stand a chance of getting the Democratic nomination. Uh, so, the, But the fact is that this is unanimously uh, opposed by Republicans. Uh, this is something now that Democrats will own, that President Obama mm-hmm. and Secretary Kerry will own uh, as we go down through history. And my guess is that it will not be, in fact, a legacy enhancing and legacy building uh, crown on their administration that they uh, currently believe it will be. All right. Is there anything that Congress can do? Well, I think that what they're going to have mm-hmm. to do, even if this uh, deal now does begin to get impl- implemented, is uh, continue to keep up the fight, first and foremost by uh, establishing committees in the Congress who will do nothing but hold the administration's feet to the fire on the actual implementation and enforcement of this deal to be watching with an eagle's eye for any Iranian violations and insisting that the administration actually follow through on its pledge to punish each and every single Iranian violation of this deal, no matter how small. I also think we're going to, there's so much that we need to do to rebuild trust and confidence with our allies in the region, particularly the Israelis. Mm -hmm. There's a lot we're going to have to do on the military and intelligence cooperation front uh, with the Israelis. And I think there are things that Congress is going to do, even as sanctions on nuclear questions in Iran uh, begin to go away, that uh, Iran's involvement in terrorism and its abuse of human rights, those kinds of sanctions can actually be increased and escalated. And I think that will be very much on Congress's agenda as we go through to keep American leverage and pressure on the Iranians. All right. He has the 34. What about the other Democrats? Are some of them perhaps looking at this and saying, I don't want to be part of this legacy? 
one hopes now that they know they won't actually be mm-hmm. killing the president's mm-hmm. deal, they won't get blamed for that, will they now be able to actually vote their conscience and say that this, in fact, is a bad deal, and they don't. Like Senator Schumer from New York and Senator Menendez from New Jersey, who are the only two Democrats on the Senate side that have so far said they will vote against the deal, uh, let's hope that, that we can get at least four more other Democrats to do so, because the other threat that we're facing, which is even more outrageous mm-hmm. than simply uh, the 34 needed to, to actually implement this, is that the White House is now actually threatening to try and filibuster and prevent any vote mm-hmm. at all in the United States Senate. So then if, in fact, they succeed in that and have the 40 Democrats who will filibuster this and prevent any vote, from happening, you will have the absolutely absurd and outrageous situation that having gotten this deal, the administration rushed to the United Nations Security Council to have the likes of Russia and China and Venezuela and Angola and Chad get to get to vote on this agreement and yet work overtime to prevent the elected representatives of the American people to have a vote on what the administration even says and admits is the most consequential national security agreement of the 21st century. All right. I mean, you know, the president is obviously trying to build legacy, and that's what was here. We wonder if John Kerry is thinking of running for president. Well, I'm sure it's in his mind, as he, uh, particularly after he picks up what I'm, I'm sure is an already wired mm-hmm. new, uh, Nobel Prize to go along with the president. Yeah, it Nobel smelled that Prize. way, didn't it? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's no doubt in his mind. I'm not sure the Democratic Party has uh, has got a feel for 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 that. He's uh, he's a one time loser in a national election already back in 2004. Uh, Mrs. Clinton seems to believe she's got this entire thing wired. We'll re- wait and see. But obviously, the weaker that she becomes as a result of of these numerous scandals, the more the likes of particularly the Vice President Joe Biden. But no doubt also. So Secretary Kerry, having finally, after worked uh, uh, at least a half dozen issues, has finally got something, a deal under his, his, his belt that he can claim for the moment is a success. And like I said, uh, given the way the Nobel Prize Committee acts, I, I can imagine they're, they're, they're already dusting off his, uh, his award. Yeah. I mean, the president won it before he even became the president. Yeah, at least, at least uh, Kerry can say, I actually did something I to know. get my prize. I know. Well, we ran some clips and tape of him today before we welcomed you on the show, and boy, he had a spring in his step in, in that announcement. Yeah, no doubt that, uh, that that John Kerry believes he's got something uh, for the ages here. But, I mean, listen, he has a long career in the United States Senate on critical national security questions, whether it was supporting missile defense, supporting the liberation of Kuwait, um, all the way through whether or not uh, uh, to support the surge in Iraq, and in which he was on the wrong side of every single mm-hmm. one of those issues, to imagine now that he He's gotten it right with this appeasement of, of this uh, hardline Islamist theocratic regime in Iran that chants death to America and death to Israel. And I still, is, uh, I mean, two days ago was calling America the great Satan. Oh, it hasn't let up. If anything, I think it's intensified. it was signed in, in mid-July, it has intensified. All right. From the Republican point of view, is this something who's going, that's going to galvanize them? Because there's a lot of them to be galvanized. Yeah, no question. I think this is, in fact, a unifying issue. Republicans will look for differences on who can be tougher and how quickly they're going to, to reverse this deal. But, uh, but there's no question that national security issues in general, the concerns with Iran, the concerns with ISIS, with Russia, Putin and China – uh, that uh, for re- the Republican side, national security issues once again have a dramatically new salience, at least uh, almost competing with uh, the economic health of the nation. So the Iran deal and uh, and the implementation of this against the wishes of the majority of the American people and their elected representatives, I think, will be a galvanizing moment. All right, John, I mean, what about the bigger picture about democracy and the hangover? Look what we're watching, what we're calling it, I guess. 
guess the uh, race of the outsiders, um, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, happening all over the world. Jeb Bush, who was not an outsider, it could be said an insider, but he did a tweet today on this deal and said, partisan minority should not block bipartisan effort to stop bad deal that will fund mulas, destabilize the region, and pave Iran's path to the bomb. You know, what about that big picture that it was a partisan minority that could make a deal this important for the United States and really for the world? Yeah, I think it's just an absolute uh, travesty and shame on uh, the administration and in some ways shame on the Republican Congress for allowing this situation to develop where they did not go to the mat and demanding that this kind of deal, again, the most consequential national security deal uh, of this century, if not since the end of the Cold War, that that not be treated as a treaty under our Constitution requiring the two-thirds support of the American Senate to pass this kind of deal with about one-third support, completely partisan in nature, uh, to have this go forward under those circumstances, I think is just a, a travesty and will only make people more cynical about their political process. Yeah, who knows who will run next. All right. John Hanna, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you today. Thanks for having me, Arlene, anytime. All right, thank you. John Hanna, he's with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's a senior counselor. He also served as Vice President Dick Cheney's National Security Advisor during the second term of President George Bush. George Bush. George Bush.